praise the Lord, mightiest prophet of the Lord. Amen. Amen. What the mightiest is. Can you drop the sound around the studio? The noise? The celebration, rather? Well, uh, beloved people, I know that people have tuned in globally across all the continents of the earth. What a mighty, mighty time in which to be born again, beloved people. It is a tremendous time. The Lord Jehovah Hamelech, Jehovah Elion, the Lord Most High, Jehovah Bara, Jehovah Adonai, the Lord God, he has decided to unleash a tremendous historic revival in the church. And I know that this is a powerful watershed moment for the church, the moment of refreshing, the moment of renewal, the moment when Jehovah Mephalti, the deliverer, the Lord, the deliverer of the church, the deliverer of the nations, has remembered the nations of the earth. And I know that uh, at this hour, now the Lord is strengthening the testimony of the Christian believer. And there are many, many people who have come from different places. You heard about this healing service from your denominations that you have broken out of and come here today. Some of you probably, you were mobilized from your home. You don't go to church. But this is the house of the Lord. This is the house of the Lord. I welcome you to the house of the Lord, beloved people. And those tuned in in different time zones, there are those who are tuned in night time, there are those who are beginning their morning today. But the Lord Jehovah at this hour is doing a new thing in the church. This is the right time at which you have come to the house of the Lord. In other words, it would be a big mistake to miss this visitation, and today, if I speak with you briefly and make a decree over the healing, I know that many, many, many tens of cripples, large numbers of cripples have walked. I know that many blind eyes have opened, many deaf ears have popped open, wounds, spinal cord situations, some of the conditions not yet announced on radio, but uh, after my decree tonight, the Lord is going to do even bigger. It's going to be a flood. It's going to be a, a river that is going to flow. The river you see in the book of Ezekiel, chapter 47, verses 1 to verse 6. That river that was at the ankle level and then measured another thousand cubits, the knee level, and then measured another thousand cubits to the waist and then measured another thousand cubits, and then it was such a big river that you couldn't swim against. You had to be swept in the direction of the current of the river, and that is exactly what is happening in the church right now, that the river that flows from heaven is now flowing through the church and sweeping those that have come on board, sweeping them in the direction of the current, direction of eternity, direction of righteousness, direction of revival. But before I speak about the healing, many, many people that are going to be healed, the very massive, large healings I've seen, big, big healings. The Lord has shown me a lot of massive healings that will continue, will take place, even after I finish this conversation with you. Before I do that, I want to read, I would like to read from the book of Matthew chapter 15, just that those who are new in the church, who have just walked into the altars of the Lord, may be able to get a bearing, beloved people. Matthew chapter 15, verses 29 to 31, and I'm talking about from Mombasa to Busia, from Namanga to Lokichogyo, all the way from Finland to the ends of New Zealand, from the ends of South Korea to the ends of Canada, the United States, and the tip of South America. I am reading from Amplified, but there are other versions. The book of Matthew, chapter 15, 29 to 31, it says, Before I make the decree, and many of you be healed even across the borders, the different nations, already we have tremendous 
healings in Nigeria, very powerful. The Lord loosened uh, the tongues, the mute. And uh, I'm also told about this here. And Uganda, the blind, the cripples that have walked in Lira, in Kitgum and other places. I'm reading Matthew chapter 15, verses 29 to 31. This is what he says in Amplified, but I will try to refer to other versions. He says, And Jesus went on from there, and passing along the shores of the Sea of Galilee, then he went up into the hills. The other version says he went up the mountain and kept sitting there. But the other version says he went up the mountain and he is seated there. He went up the mountain and he sat there. And then verse 30 says, A great multitude kept, again, sorry, a great multitude came to him, bringing with them the lame, the crippled, the maimed, the blind, dumb, and many others, and they put down at his feet. The other versions come out clearly again. They say they brought the crippled, they brought the lame, the blind, the deaf, the mute, and many, many other diseases, those that were suffering from many other diseases. And that is where you have the tumors, the cancers, the wounds, the leprosy, and everything else. Again, he says, verse 30, And a great multitude came to him, bringing with them the lame, and the maimed, and the cripples, and the blind, and the dumb, and the deaf, and many others, who were very sick and suffering, and they put them down at his feet. And he cured them all. The other versions say, and he healed them all. And he healed them all. Then verse 31 says, So the crowd was amazed when they saw the dumb speaking, the crippled walking, the lame made whole, the lame walking, the blind seeing, and they recognized and praised and thanked and glorified the God of Israel. This is a very powerful scripture that is happening to the church in this land right now. Because he says, the Lord Jesus went up the hills. The other versions say he went up the mountain and he sat. Once he reached up the mountain, he sat down. And then they brought him all the cripples, the maimed, the lame, the blind, the deaf, the mute, and all other diseases. Those that were suffering from tumors, cancer, diabetes, hypertension, kidney failure, heart conditions, spinal cord injuries, brain tumors, the mentally unwell, psychosis, the lunatic, babies whose necks were weak, all kinds of other conditions. The Bible does not enumerate, but you can tell that they really brought all the sick. And you can tell at this time that there was no medical appliances. There were no surgical appliances at this time. There was a failure in human technology. There were no machines, no medication, no medicine. So these people had suffered these conditions, beloved people. There were no medical equipment, appliances, applications to try to remedy their situations, as you can imagine. And then now, it is within the backdrop of that that they brought them, meaning there was no human solution. There was no human solution for these people. And so they brought them and laid them at the feet of Jesus. And the Lord Jesus walked up the mountain, and then he sat there. And when he sat there, at that moment they brought all these conditions, bespeaking the, the deplorable human condition of this earth. The cripples, the blind, the deaf, the mute, the lame, the maimed, the tumors, the cancers, spinal cord injuries, wounds that have not healed, perforated heads, babies whose legs are weak. Those who have heart conditions, spleen, liver failure, kidney problems, and all these things, all of the above, 
all the sicknesses and diseases under the sun. They brought them before the Messiah and they laid them down at the feet of Jesus. I want to explain this very carefully, beloved people, before I make a decree. There's going to be a river. There's going to be a river of a flooding this land and those beyond abroad. There's going to be a major river of healing after I finish this and decree. And you see very clearly that the Lord Jesus went up the hill. And then now, when you turn to the book of Ephesians, when you turn to Ephesians chapter 1 verse 20, Ephesians 1 20, this is what he says. He says, and so that you, beginning from 19, and so that, again, this is amplified, and so that you can know and understand what is immeasurable, the immeasurable, the unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe as demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. Let me just read that again that you may understand what is happening in this land. And so that you can know and understand what is the immeasurable and unlimited and surpassing greatness of his power in and for us who believe are demonstrated in the working of his mighty strength. And he goes on to say, beloved people, he goes on to say, further on here, verse 20, which is my target, he says, which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his own right hand. This is King, this is amplified, so he adds own. And seated him at his own right hand in heavenly places. And you can get that picture in the book of Acts chapter 7, verses 55 to 56. You can also pick it from Romans chapter 8, 34, and Hebrews chapter 1, verse 3, saying that you see, after the Messiah had completed his public ministry of it, then the Lord now brought him up and let he exalted him. He raptured him and raised him and took him, took him up into the higher heavens and sat him. He is now seated on the right hand side of God the Father, Jehovah Elohim, Jehovah Adonai, Jehovah Yahweh. He is now seated there. And you see very clearly now that in Matthew chapter 15, 29, 31, the Messiah, Christ the Messiah, he climbed up the mountain and then he sat there. And when he sat there, there were no medical appliances, no surgical tools, no medications then, and they had defeated even whatsoever was available. And these were people of tremendous suffering, deplorable conditions, the poverty of the human state. And they were in serious pain and agony and suffering. They crippled, they blind, they deaf, they mute, paralytic, spinal cord injury. Those whose tongues were tight, those who were in conditions that were unsolvable according to human wisdom. Then they brought them before Jesus at that mountain. But now we see that after the Lord, the Messiah, Christ Jesus, the Lord, when he finished his public ministry, and then he went now up on high. Now he climbed another mountain, the mountain of the glory of the Lord. And he went there, and we have seen now that he's seated on that mountain of glory the mountain of the glory of the Lord, and be seated on the right hand side of the Father. And then John chapter 14, I'm reading verse 11, all he says, he says, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me. Or else, believe me for the sake of every work, for the very works themselves, for the things I've done, in other words, if you cannot trust me, at least let these works that I do in 
in my father's name convince you. Verse 12 is our target, beloved people. He says, I assure you most solemnly, I tell you, because this is amplified, if anyone steadfastly believes in me, he will himself be able to do the things that I do, and he will do even greater things than this, because I go to the Father, beloved people. Now you see, today you have brought your cripples, you have brought your blind, you brought your deaf, your mute, paralytic, the conditions that have no medical appliances. These are conditions that the doctors have failed to remedy. The surgeons have failed to correct. There is no injection to inject someone to rise up as a cripple, to inject the cripple and the cripple started walk. There are no medical appliances. The Bible is repeating here. And these are now the conditions that you have today laid at the feet of Jesus on this mountain of glory where you sit up on the right hand side of the Father. And that's why there is a tremendous visitation here, because he says, Greater things than I shall the latter glory do. At this hour the Lord has opened mighty portals of heaven, and he says, And he heals them all. So today the Lord is going to heal people, the tumors will dissolve, the cancers will go, you begin with the cripples, and then the blind eyes will open, then the deaf ears will open, the mute tongues released, paralytic get up, those who had conditions that were internal, maybe the kidneys failures, the liver cancers, the stomach ulcers, whatever the condition that cannot be addressed, that have no medical appliances. He says, the blood of Jesus is still flowing. The blood of the Lamb is still flowing, beloved people. And I want to share with you a conversation that God the Father, the Father of our Lord Jesus, Jehovah Yahweh, shared with me a few days ago. The Lord, he took me straight into heaven. And when he took me to heaven, he walked me straight into his throne room, the most holy place in heaven. And when he walked with me to the throne room, he opened the door, and as we walked in, even past the ark of the covenant of the Lord, then I saw him stretch his hand, and he took from the tree of life, he took the leaves of the tree of life, the leaves of eternity, and he took a lot of them, fresh leaves, very fresh, and he placed them on my hand. Some of them were larger, and I am not allowed to share with you greater detail on that, but they were larger and very spectacular and different, and others were of normal size, and a lot of them had placed in my left prophetic hand. And then he said, these are for the healing of the nations. And that is why I announced this tremendous healing service of Jehovah, the healing service of the Lord. And that's why now I am going to lift up my left prophetic arm my left prophetic hand towards the throne room of Jehovah, my friend. Jehovah, my God. Jehovah, my sender. The God of our Lord Jesus that sent me to prepare the nations for the glorious coming of the Messiah. In this ministry, those of you who have just arrived, here I rebuke sin. I rebuke the false prophets. I rebuke the false apostles. I rebuke the falsehood, false gospel, I preach righteousness and holiness to prepare the church for the glorious coming of the Messiah. The Bible says in Hebrews 12, 14, make every effort to live in peace with all men and to be holy. And he says, for without holiness, nobody will see the Lord. And that's why in preparing the way for the glorious coming of the Messiah, he has sent me to call the nation, to call the church, to call the body of Christ, to call the believers back into repentance. Call them to repentance that they may return now. They turn away from sin. Turn away from wickedness. Turn away from apostasy. Turn away from decay. Turn away from 
on the cross and come back to the holiness of the Lord. Why? Because holiness is the benchmark of heaven. Holiness is the standard of entry to the kingdom of God. I have seen the Messiah coming. I have seen the church taken into glory. And the church he takes is a glorious church that wears the garment of righteousness. And so right now, wherever you are, beloved people, speaking from Nairobi here, this is one of the wonders of this age. And wherever you are assembled, whether abroad, whether in Angola, Rwanda, Angola, Uriki, Angola, it does not matter where, or you are in Lagos, Nigeria, or you are in Maracay, in Venezuela, or you are in Helsinki, you are in Australia, Sydney, Melbourne, Canberra, it doesn't matter. Or you are in New Zealand, or South America, Asia, in Shonboryong, all those cities of South Korea. Even those students from North Korea, it doesn't matter where you are. I am going to decree here and lift up my left prophetic hand. And fire is going to leave my left prophetic hand. And it's going to be a wonder because it's going to touch people across the earth. And after that, you see tremendous floods of healing. Why? Because the Messiah is coming and the Lord is using this to establish the identity, the mark, and the stripes of the messenger of righteousness, the messenger of the way, the messenger of the hour, the messenger of prepare the way the Messiah is coming. So now I lift up my left prophetic hand, beloved people, and I decree right now, in the mighty name of Jesus, that power leave my hand, my left prophetic hand, and touch you, and touch you, and touch you, and touch you. You'll feel a lot of fire all over your bodies, most of you, those of you in ailment, even those of you not yet baptized in the Holy Spirit. Let fire now leave my left prophetic hand, and touch you, and touch you, and touch, and touch, and touch, and touch, and touch everywhere across this land. And that now, let the crippled legs that were weak, on cripple, no medicine, no medical appliances. I command the crippled legs to be strengthened now, to be fortified, totally by Spanish, to be fortified that you may get up and walk. I have commanded all the cripples to get up and walk. I have commanded now all the blind eyes to pop, literally pop open. I have commanded all the deaf ears to pop open. I have commanded the mute tongues to be loose, the wounds to dry up. Those who are lame, their legs should be stretched, to be pulled, whole columns be added, that now the legs may face down properly and be stable and strong, fortified and walk. I commend that tumors disappear, cancers disappear, minor cord injuries, those under thrombosis, those in hospitals. I commend your conditions to leave you. I decree now that let all diseases under the sun leave you completely that people may be made whole, that you may know that the Messiah is coming, and the messenger of righteousness is here, that you may know that this is the one about whom the Bible promised, that I will send my messenger in the final days to prepare your way before the dreadful day of the Lord, to prepare the way of the Messiah. I have decreed now that everybody across the earth, now you can do what you could not do, now rise up and walk. Those of you who are blind, open your eyes and see. The deaf now your ears, I have commanded them to listen to my tongue and literally both open and be very sensitive. I have decreed cancers out, tumors out, typhoids out, blood conditions out, leukemia. I have decreed also diabetes, hypertension, all those cancers of the blood. I have decreed that you be subjected under the power of the blood of Jesus. I have decreed these things, lifting up my left prophetic arm, and declare touch, that the Lord may touch you. The long out face arm of the Lord, touch, 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 and touch all over the earth. In the mighty name of Jesus, the Messiah is coming. So, Darabah, 
So that's why in the mighty name of Jesus, amen, amen. 